Hi, it's Dr. Darren Schmidt at the Nutritional Healing Center in Ann Arbor. And I got a number of thoughts here I want to share with you. These are notes that I write down during my day when I'm talking to patients, and I think that it would be cool to share with you. So let's just get through these. Uh, number one, aspirin is not a vitamin, although doctors hand it out like it is. And the point of them doing that is to make your blood thin. So if you want your blood to be thin, and you know if you're uh, at risk to having a stroke or something, then get into ketosis because fat is slippery. Imagine fat on your fingers like oil. It's very slippery. And then sugar is sticky. So get into ketogenic diet and cycle in and out, in and out of it. That's the best thing you can do. Okay, next one, uh, number two. I've had two patients in my career who had a lot of candy in one night. And ever since then, they've suffered. So don't let your kids or don't let yourself eat a lot of candy in one night, and might uh, you might regret it years later. Okay, number three. Some people have asked me if they could take any supplements during a fast. The answer generally is no, but if you do, <clears throat> the best supplements would be binders, meaning like charcoal, activated carbon, um, bentonite clay. These are things that will clean the intestines, especially the large intestine, of garbage. And while you're during the during the fast, you'll be detoxing and these binders will ensure that they leave your body okay I have number four here um, you have to train your server at restaurants to bring you enough butter to keep you in ketosis if you're trying to be in ketosis and I figured this out because I would ask for butter and I get a little tiny cup or a little bowl with like three pats of butter in it and now I tell them get me butter and I with a and I do this with my hands and I'm showing them a bowl with my hands and uh, it works out really well so um, large quantities of butter will keep you in ketosis and of course you want to be avoiding sugar um, but train your server okay next the biggest factor for healthy adulthood is how much sugar you had as a kid and then the next factor is how easily and how often you get your body in and out of ketosis that's my opinion, and uh, the other people have said similar things, but I just want to tell that to you. Okay, uh, number six. Um, the Atkins products are not ketogenic. So I was at the store last week, and they had a big shelf with Atkins products on sale. I just started reading the labels, and they are a one to two ratio of fat versus protein plus carbs. So they have too much protein in the Atkins products, to make them ketogenic. You can call their products low carb and they're st still following the philosophy of low carb high protein that was popular in the 90s. So the Atkins Corporation needs to catch up with the new data. So if you want to come out of ketosis, you can have an Atkins bar or an Atkins shake. Just That's just crazy to me. Okay, but that's how it goes. Okay, the, the word protein actually means in ancient Greek of first importance. So the person that created that word didn't know that protein is not of first importance. And what is of first importance is actually fat. Okay, so the origin of the word is incorrect. Okay, next. I've had now maybe 10 patients who have done a parasite stool analysis, and they sent it to a lab, and the report came back negative, even though... When they put their stool analysis in the box, sealed it up and, you know, shipped it, there was a parasite worm in the box. Ten times this has happened over the, over the many years I've been in practice. And it just tells you how laboratory technicians don't want to see it. They, they may have been trained to look for parasites and identify what the parasite is, but it's so disgusting or the training is so bad or... They're just so inept that there's a worm in the, in the stool analysis and it shows up negative on the lab report. Okay, um, next. So as a human being, you're, you're living in a human body right now. Our bodies need produce and fat. Now, yes, our bodies need protein too. But if you want to get the maximum number of nutrients, micro and macro, you want to get... Uh, what I call fatty salad, make fatty salads. Okay, now the muscle meat for all of our ancestors 
was not a valuable food. They gave that to the dogs or they maybe they saved it for the winter. The valuable food was organ meats and then the organ meats in fat and then maybe berries in fat, produce in fat. Okay, so keep that in mind. Um, we Our bodies don't like the muscle meat as, as much as we thought they did. And lean meat is dangerous. There was a term during the explorer days in the United States around the 1700s called rabbit starvation. And this is when guys would get stuck in, you know, northern Wyoming in the wintertime and there's 20 foot snow drifts and they couldn't go anywhere. So they were hunkered down for the winter eating rabbit and trapping rabbits and rabbits were, were lean. And over the course of four to six weeks, these guys were near death because they weren't getting enough fat in their diet from the rabbits and it was just too much protein. Okay, so rabbit starvation tells us that eating lean meat is dangerous. Okay, the other thing I want to say is that when you talk about a high-protein diet or a low-carb diet, and I, I, you may have heard me say this before, you got to mention all three factors, fat, protein, and carbs, and how they're related to each other. So just saying a low-carb diet's not enough. Just saying um, high-fat diet's not enough. Because if you have a high-fat, high-sugar diet, it's very dangerous. You got to talk about all three at the same time. It's like filling up the air of one of your tires on your car and just completely ignoring the other tires. Same thing with discussing macronutrients. You have to pay attention to all three. And I'm going to do more, more videos on that subject because not talking about all three macronutrients at once has led many people astray. Okay. Um, so having said that, I want to say that sugar is bad, except that there are exceptions to this. And sugar is bad with protein, and sugar is bad with fat, and sugar is bad alone. Sugar, sugar, sugar is bad. Now, I do need to say that if you're coming out of ketosis, sugar is not bad. When we're talking about quantities of sugar, okay, now you can get quantities of sugar from high starchy vegetables. But this is what I want to say about sugar. There was a time a long time ago when I read my old nutrition textbooks when there were only two sugars. There was um, dextrose and levulose. Now, in chemistry, there's a concept in where they relate physics to chemistry and they put a light through a chemical in a liquid and the light will be polarized to the left or it'll be polarized to the right. So the light actually shifts based on the chemistry. So dextrose is sugar that shifted to the right, hence the name dex, D-E-X-T, that means right. And then levulose was the sugar that shifted to the left, hence the name lev, meaning left. Well, and back then everybody knew that levulose was dangerous and dextrose was safe when you compare the two. Well, the food manufacturers changed the names of the sugar without telling anybody and therefore they could sell more food. And don't you hate it when people try to change the, the definitions of words and they don't tell you? So the dangerous one called levulose was changed to fructose. And the, safe, the safer sugar called dextrose was renamed to glucose. Okay, so fructose is dangerous, and I have a link below. Um, Dr. Gary Fetke, he talks about how fructose is bad, and the website is below, and there's a link also of a talk that he gave at Low Carb USA. And fructose is designed by Mother Nature, by Mother Nature to get you addicted to it, to make you fat, faster than any other sugar, to slow your brain down more than any other sugar. That's why it's dangerous. Now you can have some, you can have some fruit, but it's designed by nature to um, slow you down and make you fat. Okay, so sugar is good except for when it's bad, and sugar is bad except for when it's good, based on what you need to do. So you can eat some fruit to come out of ketosis, and that's very therapeutic, once you're in ketosis in the first place. I hope you understand that. Okay, next. Dr. Atkins used to have a cancer clinic but he shut it down after two years because his Atkins diet wasn't reversing cancer. And why is that? Because it had too much protein. And people weren't getting into ketosis deep enough 
to have long-term lasting results. But now we know more, and uh, I just want to share this with you, that uh, Atkins had a lot of information correct, but then he was missing some data. Okay, um, I just recently had a patient who dropped her high cholesterol from ketosis. Some people have a genetic problem with cholesterol while in ketosis. Hers was over 400, and she got it down to 200 over the course of, I think, about two months by supplementing lots of carnitine, uh, 2,000 milligrams. So I'm sharing that with you because I know I have some people who are in ketosis and they have a genetic rise in their cholesterol, LDL, etc., and uh, tricarnitine in, high, in a high dose, 2,000 milligrams. Okay, somebody asked me what, what was my favorite book discovery of 2017, and my favorite book discovery was The Metabolism of Tumors by Dr. Otto Warburg. And I think every single doctor in the country needs to read that book because Otto Warburg was describing how a cancer cell, uh, how it goes from being a normal cell to being a cancer cell. And I don't think that Otto Warburg knew that that applies to diabetes and heart disease, and it's the same mechanism. Now, in the 1940s, there was a husband and wife named Dr. Corey. They figured out the lactic acid cycle, and that is the mechanism of chronic disease. And Otto Warburg was alive at the time he died in 1970. So he probably saw the evolution of his research um, expanding and expanding over the decades. And then after 1970, um, he was attacked. And his information was pretty much lost. But now it's coming back. Okay. And uh, the last thing I want to say is that I used to know a girl that taught at uh, Detroit City, uh, D Detroit Public Schools. And she showed me a health textbook. And there was a chapter on quackery. And I kind of flipped through it. And one of the things that it said was that a quack doctor will tell you that there is a single cause of chronic disease. And now this textbook was written in the 80s. And this is the destruction of your knowledge and your health and your results in your health care, uh, perpetrated by the educational system, controlled by the AMA, controlled by centralized government, uh, uh, raining down misinformation and om omitted data to the students across the country through uh, centralized the Department of Education. So I remember reading this. This is uh, 2000 and one, 2002, before I had figured out lactic acidosis. And, I, and there were several things that I read in that chapter. And I remember thinking to myself, okay, so there's got to be a single cause of chronic disease or a single mechanism of chronic disease. And they knew it. And now they're telling the students that it doesn't exist. Okay, so this is the way that I was thinking back then. Like, okay, there's got to be a, a very common or singular mechanism of chronic disease. And what is it? So um, I'm glad that I found it. Um, anyways, that's just something I want to share with you. So if you like this information, please give me a thumbs up, share, and subscribe. All right, thanks.